Good evening, everyone. Let us welcome Ms. Rowan Filhardy and Ms. Elizabeth Walker, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Rowan. Thank you, Elizabeth. Wonderful job. Good evening, Dr. Varley, Mr. McKinney, members of the Board of Education, special guests, parents, teachers, and friends who are watching this evening. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Vihas Dar. Welcome, Dr. Varley, Mr. McKinney, members of the Board of Education, Mr. Geiger, Mrs. Acosta, faculty, family, and friends. Thank you for virtually joining us here today for this momentous occasion in which we celebrate the graduation of the Columbia Middle School Class of 2020. Even if it must be done remotely, this graduation still celebrates the same principles as any live graduation ceremony, those of discipline, collaboration, and respect. My three years at CMS were unlike any others, teaching me valuable lessons, both in terms of academic learning as well as general life skills. Now more than ever, I see my journey at Columbia as a space mission to the moon to explore territories unknown to mankind. Sixth grade started out with a blast, quite literally. My spacecraft had just launched into space. I can still remember the confusion that I experienced on my first day at CMS, using a lock, getting to different classes, and learning everyone's names seemed impossible at first. However, with repeated practice, I was able to master these skills and much more in the first month of school. I would say by the end of sixth grade, we were safely able to land on the moon. Seventh grade consisted of a lot of exploring for me. I was introduced to a new class called English, a new exams called finals. What? What are those? I thought to myself. Just as an astronaut explores the moon, I touched the moon rock of academics, something that I could never experience back on Earth. In seventh grade, our school had Enrichment Day, a special event that is hosted once every two years. Here, I learned about the life and profession of a pilot, an FBI agent, and a doctor. It was fascinating to learn about the distinctiveness of each profession. Seventh grade flew by quickly, and before I knew it, it was time to embark on the last leg of my journey, and the most critical one yet, eighth grade. I was excited for eighth grade more than I was for any other year, as my training and experience in sixth and seventh grade were finally going to pay off. My journey during eighth grade specifically was like the Apollo 13 space mission. And on March 9th, 2020, the message was sent out. Houston, we have a problem. Berkeley Heights officially reported its first case of COVID-19. The pandemic was rapidly spreading across the country. And as schools closed, both students and teachers were forced to recreate school life at home without a single precedent to guide them. We quickly adapted to our new lifestyles though. The reassuring support of our school leadership played a key role in facilitating this transition. Mr. Geiger's daily videos on his YouTube channel kept me motivated to do my best. And I am indebted to the CMS counselors, Ms. Fenimore, Mrs. Morris, and Ms. Deloro. Through their careful planning, we were able to enjoy four SEL days and over 14 different stress relief exercises to help us relax. After completing all of the requirements, my spacecraft finally landed back on Earth. Of course, my success would not have been possible without the talented engineers at Mission Control guiding me through the entire journey. I would like to say a special thank you to my grandfather 
for helping me stay on task at all times, as well as my grandmother, parents, and sister for reminding me to never give up. Lastly, I would like to thank all of the wonderful staff here at CMS for making my middle school years extremely enjoyable and memorable. In seventh grade, I had learned about the differences among various professions. But after journeying through this pandemic, I now realize that in their deepest essences, all professions work synergistically for the benefit of society. Thus, if there's one lesson that this unprecedented time has brought to light, it is a value of collective work, a virtue that classifies every hardworking person as a hero. Today, my heroes are right here within my school community, and I am so honored to learn from each and every one of them. Once again, congratulations to the Columbia Middle School Class of 2020 for making it through this difficult journey. I think Nelson Mandela says it best. It always seems impossible until it's done. I wish all of you the best of luck and good fortune on future missions in your academic career. Thank you very much. Beautifully done, Vyas. Thank you so much. It is my honor to introduce Dr. Melissa Varley, Superintendent of Schools. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Geiger. First, welcome. I want to take a moment to welcome families, teachers, students, and community members. I wrote my speech a few weeks ago with an emphasis on making your mark academically, athletically, or artistically. However, due to all the changes that have occurred, I made some changes. I did, take, I did forget to mention the board members. I want to thank them for their time. They worked tirelessly for the district. You, as 13 to 14 year olds, must be overwhelmed with all that is going on. Everyone is suffering, some more than others. It does make me happy to see you biking around Berkeley Heights and socially distancing. Tonight, my speech is about kindness. What about being kind? There are all types of people in the world and the differences are that make us up are all unique. Let's celebrate those differences instead of alienating others. I ask of you to think before you speak, think before you post, Take a stand for those who are being mistreated. If you can't take a stand on your own, find someone who will help you. A superintendent, a teacher, a police officer, a principal, a banker, anyone. In my search for inspiration for this speech, I found a tale of a boy who had been planning on taking his own life. Another boy happened upon him in the midst of some distress and offered help. He shared a Coke with him and they became friends. This one gesture altered the trajectory of this boy's life. He ended up becoming a valedictorian of his high school. What if the second boy hadn't been kind? I'm going to also ask of you to stop yourself from joining a rant on social media. Stand up for those who are being mistreated, stand up for yourself, and as we know with the uptick in suicides among the young, the old adage, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt, no longer is true. All of our words mean something. Whether you're online or going face to face, be positive, share, be kind, make a statement. You will find that you will feel so much better building someone up rather than tearing them down. In another adage, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Change is a difficult task. It is enduring the unknown. As growing young adults and in today's era, you're experiencing change rapidly. You have the ability to make this world a better place for all races, cultures, sexual orientations, and religions, etc. Change begins with us. And Mr. Reinstein, the students before you have completed the requirements of the Berkeley Heights School District and therefore it is my honor to recommend that they be certified by you to be awarded their middle school diplomas. Thank you very much.
Welcome, Mr. Reinstein. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Having virtually attended your award ceremony last week and talking with some of the staff, I can now appreciate how distinguished this class truly is in the classroom, in the arts, and on the ball field. What a challenging last few months this has been. Uncharted territory which required nimble thinking and hard work mixed with a scrambling for good measure. Those challenges did not sink us though. On the contrary, you rose to the occasion. You transformed the remote learning challenge into opportunities to fully experience them, embrace them, work to solve them, and broke out of your comfort zone doing it. Simply put, our greatest challenges brought our greatest opportunities in which you, Columbia eighth grade students, made a difference. Once upon a time, there was a wise man who used to go to the ocean to do his writing. He had a habit of walking on the beach before he started his work. One day he was walking along the beach when he noticed a boy picking up and gently throwing things into the ocean. Approaching the boy, he asked, young man, what are you doing? The boy replied, throwing starfish back in the ocean. The sun is up, the tide is going out, and if I don't throw them back, they will die. The man laughed to himself and said, young man, do you not realize that there are miles and miles of beach and there are starfish along every mile? You can't possibly make a difference. After listening politely, the boy bent down, picked up another starfish, and threw it into the surf. Then he smiled at the man and said, I made a difference for that one. So Columbia eighth graders, how will you make a difference? I encourage you to do something that will make a difference to someone else's life. Find a way to contribute, whether that's to your family, your sports team, an educational endeavor, a nonprofit organization, or maybe even somewhere in the Berkeley Heights community and do it the absolute best that you can. Let today's middle school graduation be just one small step on your educational journey. Let your high school experience take you on a path of your choosing, whichever path that might be. On behalf of the entire Board of Education, we wish you the best of luck in whatever you set your sights on. Our suggestion is to aim high and learn from as many people as you can along the way. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Varley. Thank you so much, Mr. Reinstein. I'm so glad you were able to join us here this evening. We are now going to go to the part of the program to award the diplomas. Tonight, we will do that virtually, and I'd like to introduce Gia Ghosh and Ariana Maury to the podiums, who will read all of our students' names this evening. Luke Ahern, Emily Alves, Mackenzie Amelie, Jonathan Ann, Nicole Anderson, Roland Arenas, Ace Atuk, Krish Bansal. Amber Barbieri, Trey Barnum, Jordan Baum, Hannah Beffler, Sophie Burbrower, Lucas Black, Brianna Boland, Christopher Bon Nelson. Artem Boretz, Jaden Bow, Jake Bowen, Daniel Bauer, Ryan Burgowski, Peyton Buckley, Jack Byrne, Caitlin Casasado. Marissa Kagan, James Campbell, Sarah Castrovinci, 
Hayden Sear. Owen Chait. Oliver Chait. Caleb Chan. Vipav Chaturvedi. Ashley Chavez. Maya Chawala. Michael Chifa. Patrick Chojanowski. Danielle Shimei. Jack Ziancy. Chase Consola. Morgan Cottom. Madeline Coulter. Andrew Kudo. Leo Coviello. Olivia Curtis. James Dalabani. Samira Dalabani. Michael Dalabani. Joseph Dasty. Helena DeBang. Michael DeSousa. Via Star. Landon Diakojanaka. Sydney Diaz. Isabel Diamond White. Natalie Denunzio. Maria Di Pasquale. Sophia Donnelly. Akash Dubé. Keith Duryi. Sophie Earnshaw. Olivia Escott. Isaac Espinoza. John Fajardo. Ava Feinberg. Sophia Feinberg. Daltrey Ferrigno. Harry Finson. Rowan Fluharty. Victoria Fontes. Shane Forrester. Kyle Foster. Thomas Gabor. Michael Gertzma. Karina Gerhauser. Sarah Gleason. Winifred Grober. Ophelia Gurdian. Rodrigo Gurdian. Abigail Ha. Kayla Hahn. Jackie Harris. Tyler Hazard. Ishur Hazarika. Ava Heeman. Gabriela Henriquez. Sofia Henriquez. Avery Hips. Jonathan Huther. Elizabeth Hudgens. Caitlin Hughes. Thomas Hunt. Samantha Hewn. Siona Giant. Claire Jun. Bianca Johnson. Sophie Coltenbach. Kelsey Kahn. Charlotte Kang. Eamon Cavanaugh. Ayush Kyle. Aditi Akana. Jonah Kim. 
Lindsay Kim. Megan Kim. Patrick Kingsley. Madeline Kinney. Ava Klink. Rebecca Knuth. Savannah Cook. Emily Kubek. Aiden Key. Catalana Lar. Joseph Leposki. Ethan Lee. Mia Wedgick. Jennifer Lejoy. Angel Lee. Kelly Lee. Justin Liu. Ava Lombardi. Sophia Lombardi. Jonathan Lopes. Brian Lee. Garrett Lynn. Christian Magliacano. Joella Martinez. Anna Mastropasqua. Kenna Moriello. Paula Moriello. Kyle McCulloch. Ryan McDonnell. Patrick McGrath. Jasmine Mehta. Michelle May. Julia Mikolajczyk. Alexandra Mengue. Shiva Mondal. Aria Mongiello. Ethan Moon. Ryan Moran. Jaden Moskowitz. Sobranil McCurgy. Madison Murphy. Abigail Mistachi. Anika Nayak. Isabella Naldi. Isabella Nappi. Harper Neal. Julian Netter. Samuel Newman. William Ng. Harrison O'Brien. Blake Ortiz. Brandon Ortiz. Noah Pagdan Gannon. Joshua Pearlstein. Brett Peer. Benjamin Pereira. Julie Piazza. Julia Pien. Catherine Pyle. Carly Pitt. Andre Popescu. Akshata Pradahang. Paulina Provodorova. Aaron Purcell. Colin Quigley. Sophia Rahman. Rohit Rajesh. Ariana Rambone. Arisa Ramparada. Rodrigo Araujo. Tyler Rich. Samantha Richter. Catherine Rinaldi. Jacob Rizzo. Cormac Rouse. 
Christian Sabatino, Jason Sanders, Andrea Santa Maria, Felipe Santos, Avery Saturnia, Kenzo Schwab, Carter Shea, Chris Shetty, Brian Shi, Justin Shi, Luke Sicoli, Jeremy Sixnius, Ryan Sixnius, Brady Silverman, Cole Simon, Dominic Skelly, Henry Slotwinski, Benjamin Smuckler, William Smuckler, Jessica Snyder, Summer Sun, William Sodasanti, Brianna Sponheimer, Aaron Sprinzen, Matthew Stetcher, Cameron Stein, Alice Stern, Julieta Stravoyu, Anthony Tan, Anirudh Tiwari, Ryan Tomich, Eva Simbukas, Shelley Sviberg, Thomas Turney, Jason Bademan, Venkat Vallabhaneni, Emily Wagman, Carter Wallers, Helen Walker, Natalie Walsman, Jace Wonka, Sherry Wang, Matthew Williams, Sarah Wilson, Victor Wilson, Jason Zhu, Ryan Yu, Grant Young, Henry Young, Stephen Yu, Nicole Zecca, Lindley Zimmerman, Gia Ghosh, Ariana Mowry. Congratulations. Congrats, guys. That is not an easy task. <clears throat> As one of our largest ever graduating classes, we congratulate everyone. And thank you guys so much, Gia. Thank you, Ariana. That was beautifully done. I would like to now welcome Mr. Robert Nixon, principal of the Governor Livingston High School. Good evening. I am Robert Nixon, and I'm the principal of Governor Livingston High School. I'd like to congratulate the eighth grade class of Columbia Middle School. You have persevered through a challenging school year, and you have given your parents, teachers, and community a great deal to be proud of. I would also like to welcome the class of 2024 to Governor Livingston High School. We have a great program that we are confident will challenge and inspire you each and every day. We hope you have a great summer, and we look forward to seeing you on the Hill in September. Take care. Thank you, Mr. Nixon. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Ms. Winifred Grober. Welcome, Dr. Varley, Mr. McKinney, members of the Board of Education, Mr. Geiger, 
Mrs. Acosta, faculty, family, and friends. Thank you for joining us today to celebrate this great milestone in the lives of the eighth grade class of 2020. I'm glad we're here together, even if it is online. Mark Twain once said, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. It amazes me how fast time flies, like a butterfly whizzing away before you get a chance to look at it closely. But the beauty of it is, once you're through to the other side, you can look back and appreciate how far you've come. I think we can all agree that in the beginning of sixth graders, we were completely clueless. We were staring an alligator in the face right before we were smacked with the first impression of big bad middle school. It was new and frightening and the first time I've ever been introduced to being dummy locked. But as the year went on, I found out it wasn't that bad at all. Just the first steps into a new maturity. By the time I'd reached orchestra with Mrs. K, I'd finally found what felt like my home. I continued to take her class through all three years of middle school, and the value I found in it was immeasurable. We had so much fun going on the School of Rock trip, and it really opened our eyes and inspired us to see what our music could turn into. We've all had those classes, one or two each year we could breathe in. Eventually, I adjusted to the madness of sixth grade and learned how to roll with the punches. Pretty soon, after a summer that went by in a day, the bell rang for round two, seventh grade. I found myself relaxing more in the second year. At times, there was still that panicky feeling as we flew from class to class, but there was more familiarity in the middle of everything, and it made us all feel more secure. We enjoyed the remarkable experience of teen arts and got used to the increasingly difficult task of managing our time properly, what with tests, quizzes, and homework. But as we neared the end of our second year, we went out stronger and far more knowledgeable than we went in, our interests beginning to take form, creating a sense of independence inside of us all. By the final round, we stepped into the ring and, and prepared ourselves for the massive blow we would deliver. Now experts in the boxing ring of middle school, we traveled lightly, kings and queens of the school. We wore a sense of self-accomplishment on our chest throughout that whole beginning of our crazy year. We were balanced much better with our academics and could all focus more on the interests we've been developing slowly over time. Although we all walk through life differently, I observed something we all had in common. Eighth grade was one great way to prove Philippians 4.13, the verse that says, I can do all things. It had been a tough set of years, but we came out victorious thanks to family, friends, and staff, who all pushed us to our limits and made us truly beautiful and successful in the end. In the beginning of writing speeches for graduation, Mrs. Babick told us to keep in mind the question, what is going to be memorable about your eighth grade year? Now we can answer that question in a way we couldn't have possibly imagined before. When we started this year, we never thought we'd end up going to online classes in our pajamas, not being able to see our friends in person, we're having our graduation ceremony today on a webinar. This has taught us that while things always change in life, it is how we handle ourselves in those times of change that is important. Always look for the good in others, in yourselves, and in your circumstances. A special thanks to Ms. Schusta, Mr. Bonaspina, Mrs. Babick, Mrs. DiMartino, Ms. Sperling, and of course, the legendary Mrs. K. You offered me a chance to breathe in the time that I spent in your classes and taught me life lessons that I will continue to carry with me for as long as I live. Don't let a moment go by without realizing how lucky we are to have an unlimited future stretching up towards the sky with all of our lessons and experiences we've shared as the foundation underneath our feet. Congratulations, eighth grade. Best of luck in high school and in life beyond. Thank you, Winnie. So well done. Good evening, everyone. To the ladies and gentlemen listening, I do hope you have enjoyed our celebration so far. But before we say good night, I'd like one more remote moment with our students. Guys, it's about this time during the ceremony that I would normally ask the staff in attendance and Mrs. Acosta to stand and be recognized. I don't anticipate that you will applaud from your homes but it's never too late to take a moment and send a quick note if you thought about it. They would be just as pleased if it were a single note that CC'd as many of Columbia Middle School staff members as you would like to include. I can only think of one group of people who have worked as hard 
or perhaps even harder than our wonderful staff, all of whom adjusted both, both personal and professional lives in order to bring us to this successful conclusion of our school year. And that group working so hard, you, the students on the other side of the screen. Wouldn't we all have to agree that your final months at the middle school were certainly the most challenging of your academic career and may in fact be the most challenging you will face in public education. I've spoken to students who admit they miss the classroom. Every middle school experience has mixed memories and I know not every day was perfect. It's not a joke when I used to ask my own daughter, so who is your best friend this week? As we grow and change, so does our group of friends and it's just human nature. But I would like you to focus tonight on the things in school that you took for granted that we really don't think about as often as we should. Remember group work in science when you overheard something that prompted you to speak out and how the teacher nodded and smiled. For a moment, you sat taller in your chair. I noticed when you waited for just the right moment to put your mark on the board when figuring out a complicated math problem. It was a bit of a maze until you got to work with another student, and together you figured it out and came to a solution. You almost wanted someone to copy your work so you could say, or at least know inside, hey, we thought of that first. Recall in social studies when you had to present and you were able to find that person in class to focus on and get through your speech without worrying about the other 20 people in the room. How great it felt when you took your seat. Perhaps after that presentation, your friend leaned over to say, that didn't sound like you. It was really good. Which may have been the first time you ever thought to yourself, wow, I have a particular voice? I'm here to say tonight, yes. Yes, you certainly do. As your principal, I've seen the interactions over your three years that made you feel smart, brought you closer together, made you shine as a momentary leader, and helped you grow. And what did these times have in common? The school community. There is just something about being among people that makes life a better experience, that makes you know your struggles are not your own, that helps challenging tasks become joint learning, turns frustration into a successful moment, and most importantly, allows you to see others who are in need of help and how great it feels to be the person who reaches out. As we close out the school year, we can't help but think about how the nightly news would be different and in fact, I often believe that the entire world would be different if more people did just that, reached out to someone in need. You're the right age to consider your impact on others, and here's the secret. We don't need heroes as much as you think. What we do need is for everyday people like you and me to use common sense when speaking to and interacting with the everyday people that we meet. Remember that time in class when your friend said that didn't sound like you? If I had to guess, they expected the presentation to be given by that you that they would hang around with in the hallways. And yet when you presented, they saw a different person, someone who had taken the time to consider their words, someone who practiced their words. Yes, it was you they saw, but it didn't sound like you. They heard you growing. I'm thinking they were impressed, and I'm betting it made you feel very good. And here's another secret. Practice doesn't always make it perfect, but practice does make it pretty consistent. In everything you do, in every interaction you have, if you take the time to consider your words, consider your actions, you will find that over time, you will become the person who regularly says the right thing, does the right thing, and someone others can look to as a good example. When you consider your words, it creates a bit of a stall. You won't be the first to speak and it probably will not make you the most outspoken person in your group, but it could make you the one that they listen to the most. It may seem the opposite is true, but in fact, people listen more to the person who speaks the least. In your world of Instagram, TikTok, online gaming noise, and who knows how many messaging apps, there doesn't really seem to be a time enough to stop and consider your words. I know you will sometimes blurt something out that you might not have normally said, but be careful, especially in your world, where delete never means it's gone. Your words have been heard, read, recorded, and it's already too late. They are out there, and you can't get them back, ever. 
So yes, you have a voice. A few weeks ago in our small town, we saw a thousand people march to join voices with millions around the country so their voices could be heard. Among them were Helena DeBang and Carter Shea, two voices from Columbia Middle School who considered the impact of organizing a group to participate and took action. Just yesterday, I was so pleased to join them and many of you in an online meeting to hear your voices share concerns and raise questions that we need to first consider and then we need to answer with action. T.S. Eliot said, last year's words belong to last year's language and next year's words awaits the next voice. Maybe next year's voice is you. You know what? Forget I said that. Make next year's voice your voice. But remember to practice. Remember to consider what you will say before you speak. Be kind, reach out, and it will feel great. And remember the secrets. You needn't be a hero, and you needn't be perfect. In closing, let me just add, we all need to be a bit more of what we can be, and maybe a little bit less of what we are. We need to all grow. I have such high hopes for you all. No matter what tomorrow brings, I know you will use your voice to do well for others, and when someone you know hears of a good thing you have done, a kind word you have spoken, they will be able to say, yes, it sounds just like you. And to all my friends who are celebrating this evening, let, my sh let me share my best wishes for all the good things that the world ha has to offer. And when we meet again in the future, and I ask you, how is life? You stall for just a moment and respond by saying, Mr. Geiger, I've learned to consider my words, and people are listening. Thank you.